Flags are the essence of a nation, meant to represent whatever they find important. Now, throughout history, there have been many, many nations, kingdoms, and empires, many of which also had their own unique flags. These historical flags are some of my favorite things to look at and consider, because they are reminders of how a long since gone nation saw itself. So here are my top 10 historical flags. Just as a note, this is an admiration of the flag's design, not of the government that flew the flag. There have been plenty of terrible nations that had surprisingly nice flags, and plenty of great nations that have had terrible flags. So with that in mind, let's move on to number 10, the Republic of Yucatan. The Republic of Yucatan was a republic that lasted from 1841 to 1848. Now, this is technically the second Republic of Yucatan, the first being in 1823 after Mexico had gained independence from Spain. There is more to that story, but this isn't about the first Republic of Yucatan. This is about the second Republic of Yucatan. This republic was founded in 1841, created as a protest against the centralization of Mexico by Santa Ana. As it's told, Miguel Barbicano Terrazzo allegedly broke into a meeting in Merida, the capital of Yucatan, with a crowd of people and called for Yucatan independence. After this, the Mexican flag was replaced with the Yucatecan flag all over the newly formed country. Even though the Republic of Yucatan would be integrated into Mexico only a few years later, the flag is still unofficially flown alongside the official flag in many places, a symbol of pride for them, much like the Lone Star flag is for the state of Texas in the United States. The flag itself has two parts it can be divided into. On the left is a vertical green rectangle with white four stars in the corners and one star in the middle. On the right is a tricolor, with red on the top and bottom and white in the middle. The stars represent the five departments, or regions, of the Yucatan state, and the colors are directly based off of the colors from the Mexican flag. I'm a big fan of this flag, specifically because it is similar to the stars and stripes that are common across the Americas, but it does something new with both the color scheme and the overall design, using neither a canton of stars or a chevron like many other flags. Number 9, the Republic of Vietnam. Founded in 1955 as the state of Vietnam fell apart, the Republic of Vietnam was a nation originally created to be a French dependency pending the unification of Vietnam, which obviously didn't happen. No Dean Diem rejected this French control, however. A lot of bad stuff happened, and the next thing you know, the most famous proxy war of the Cold War was about to begin. Just like the flag of the Republic of Yucatan, even though the Republic of Vietnam would be taken over by their northern neighbors, the popular yellow flag with red stripes is still flown by many Vietnamese emigres that had fled the country as the Vietnam War came to an end. The flag of the Republic of Vietnam, often just called the yellow flag, was the same flag used by the state of Vietnam prior to it. The design came from 1890, when Emperor Tan Tai issued a decree saying that this yellow flag with three stripes would be the national flag. It was later revived by artist Le Vendée in 1948, with only minimal changes. There are some different ideas for what the design means, but an explanation is that the red stripes signify the blood running through northern, central, and southern Vietnam, or that the three stripes mean south, as in Vietnam is south of China. Today, even though the country may not exist anymore, the flag itself can be seen in many Vietnamese cultural hubs outside of Vietnam. Number 8, the Ryukyu Kingdom. Unified in 1429 by the Shou Dynasty, the Ryukyu Kingdom lives on most commonly today in the hearts of Europa Universalis four players, lasting for over 400 years before being absorbed into the Empire of Japan in 1879 as the Okinawan Prefecture. The flag that I am referencing specifically is this one, adopted in 1466 during the last ruler of the first Shou Dynasty with a design known as the Hidari Goman centered in the middle of it. The Hidari Goman is meant to represent King Shotoku, 
who had taken a liking to the symbol of the Japanese god of war, Hachiman. On the bottom of the flag is a large black strip with a red stripe running down the middle of it over the length of the flag. The history of the flag is rocky altogether, with the Satsuma invasion of 1609 forcing for changes to be made to it, and just the political environment causing various versions to exist over the 400 years that the Ryukyu Kingdom existed. Number 7. The Kingdom of Ireland Founded in 1542 as a client state of England, later becoming a client state of Great Britain, with King Henry VIII being declared the King of Ireland with the Crown of Ireland Act 1542. It existed until 1800 when it was integrated into the overarching United Kingdom of Great Britain and Ireland. The flag I am specifically talking about is the Royal Standard, featuring a golden harp with silver strings, a traditional symbol of Ireland over top a blue field meant to represent St. Patrick. There's not a whole lot for me to talk about with this flag, but what is interesting is how, while the Irish clamored for independence from the British, they often used their own variant of the Kingdom of Ireland flag, using a green background instead of a blue one, and this variant can still be seen flying in many places across Ireland to this very day. Number 6. The Republic of Zaire after gaining its independence from Belgium, the Republic of Congo was formed in 1960, and it was only five years later that the elected government was overthrown by Joseph Desiree Mobutu, later going by the name Mobutu Sese Seko Kuku Ngebendu Waza Banga, or Mobutu Sese Seku for short, with the full name meaning the all-conquering warrior who goes from triumph to triumph. By 1971, he had re-established the nation as the Republic of Zaire, where Zaire comes from the Portuguese name for the Congo River. It maintained its power until 1997, when it was overthrown in the First Congo War by the Alliance of Democratic Forces for the Liberation. The flag of Zaire is an interesting one on this list, because it's not that I necessarily think it's a beautiful flag, but rather because it is such a unique one, being one of very few flags to have anatomically accurate human imagery on it, in the form of an arm holding a torch. The torch bearer represented the revolutionary spirit of the nation, and the flag bore the colors red, green, and yellow to incorporate the colors of the Pan-African movement. On this flag, specifically, the red flames were meant to honor the nation's martyrs, surrounded in a disc to represent unity, colored in yellow, representing the nation's wealth of resources. The green background was a symbol of faith, hoping for a brighter future something this flag and the government flying it certainly did not have. Number 5. The People's Republic of Korea Organized as a provisional government in 1945 following the Japanese Empire's surrender and the end of World War II, the People's Republic of Korea is rarely talked about, but has my favorite variant of any Korean flag. Only existing for a few months, until 1946, the PRK was essentially a network of committees advocating for social change in Korea. In the northern area, occupied by the Soviet Union, the committees were built into a newly forming Democratic People's Republic of Korea. And in the southern area, occupied by the United States, they told the PRK to go burn in hell, and the Republic of Korea formed instead. I find this flag so interesting because it takes the traditional taeguk used by the Korean Empire before it and South Korea after it. But, instead of trigrams in the four corners, it uses a dense packing of three red stripes down the middle. If you couldn't tell, I'm a sucker for stripes. And even though the flag and its representative government may have only lasted a couple months, this design will always have a place in my heart. Number 4. The Sultanate of Zanzibar Formerly a possession of the Sultan of Muscat and Oman, Zanzibar became its own sovereign nation in 1856 as a settlement between two feuding brothers over secession to the Muscat and Omani throne, where Majid bin Said would take the Zanzibari throne as its own nation, but pay a tribute to Thawani bin Said. It enjoyed sovereignty until around 1890, when the British saw a plot of land not already inhabited by the British and decided to call it theirs. It existed as a British protectorate for over 70 years, and was once again a sovereign state for several more months forming a union with Tanganyika, and forming the United Republic of Tanganyika and Zanzibar, soon just becoming Tanzania. Now, there were flags used for decades over its entire lifetime, but the specific flag I thought was worth talking about was its last flag, which was only used from December of 1963 to January of 1964. 
It featured the classic Zanzibari red background, based on the solid red flag used by the Sultanate of Muscat and Oman, but with a green disc and two yellow clothes over top of it, representative of one of Zanzibar's more famous exports. Information was hard to find about this flag, but to me this is just a positive, because not only does it have a unique design, but also has an air of mystery about it that I just love. Number 3. The Kingdom of Tibet Formed out of the collapse of the Qing Dynasty in 1912, the Kingdom of Tibet existed for about 40 years as a theocratic absolute monarchy, with the Dalai Lama as its head of state. The current Dalai Lama was actually the head of state from 1937, when he was 2 years old, until it was occupied and taken over by the People's Republic of China in 1951. The Tibetan flag was adopted in 1916 by the Dalai Lama of the time, as he attempted to modernize Tibet and its military after they had declared independence from China only a few years prior. The flag features two snow lions, representing power and strength, holding an ornate jewel and a yin-yang symbol on top of a white mountain with a golden sun rising over it. In the background are alternating red and blue sun rays with a golden border running around the entirety of the flag. This flag is one among many that have come to represent liberation and freedom, still used in the Free Tibet movement by activists that call for the independence of Tibet once more. Number 2. The Sultanate of Egypt Formed as a protectorate of the United Kingdom, the Sultanate of Egypt was a nation that only lasted for 8 years from the end of the Ottomans' control of it during World War I in 1914 until its transition into an independent state in 1922 following Britain's declaration of Egyptian independence. Even though Egypt was declared to be independent, they did not have full sovereignty with Britain holding control over military and foreign affairs in the country, particularly the Suez Canal. The flag of the Sultanate of Egypt was the same as the one used by Egypt when it was an Ottoman protectorate, and features a red background, just like the red flag brought by Muhammad Ali, the de facto ruler of Egypt. The stars and crescents are obviously representative of the star and crescent common across the Ottoman Empire, but the number of them being three is representative of Ali's victories across the three continents of Africa, Asia, and Europe. There isn't a whole lot to talk about with this flag, I just find it really nice with its overloaded design on the left side and comparatively bareness on the right side. And with that, now let's move on to the final flag of the list. Number 1. The Most Serene Republic of Venice The Republic of Venice, according to the story, was established in the year 697 AD by the first Doge of Venice, Anifestus Palicius. The Republic of Venice is best known for its maritime trade power, and its colonies across the eastern Mediterranean. They wielded extreme power throughout many of their phases in history, but eventually declined in power and were ultimately integrated into Italy, following Napoleon Bonaparte's march across Europe and the many other wars the continent would see over the next hundred some years. The flag of Venice, known as the Banner of St. Mark, is a particularly unique one, not just because of its ornate designs and color schemes, but because of the flag's shape itself. The flag features six fringes, representing the six sestiri, or divisions, of Venice, which has the additional benefit of preventing damage to the flag and also just looking damn cool in the wind. On the main body of the flag is the Lion of St. Mark, representative of Mark the Evangelist, who is the patron saint of Venice. What's also really interesting is that the Lion of St. Mark would hold an open Bible in times of peace, but would have a sword drawn during times of war. The flag remains almost unchanged in the form of the modern flag of Veneto, where the Republic of Venice once was, and with the Venetian independence movement still churning, we might just be able to see one of the coolest flags in history flying over an independent nation once more. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and leave a like, it really helps me out. I intend to make more flag based videos moving forward, so let me know what you liked and didn't like or what you would want to see. If you have any flags you like and think I should check out, let me know in the comments below. Subscribe to stay up to date with my videos and ring the bell next to it to get notified for when I do upload new videos. If you want to stay up to date with what's going on with me or my channel, go follow my Twitter. This has been Historical Hindsight, and I'll be seeing you soon.